Hi everyone, welcome back to the Connor Prairie Vault. It is October, so we've pulled some really unique and exciting items from the collection to share with you today. Uh, some of these have a little bit of a spooky background to them. Um, I'm gonna start off by telling you about uh, three portraits that we have in our collection, um, one of which we specifically pulled because of uh, its significance to some of the programming that we do around here. Um, many of you are familiar with our Headless Horseman Festival. It's a wonderful family annual tradition that happens here at Connor Prairie. Uh, what some of you may not know is that we have a print of Washington Irving in our collection. And Washington Irving is the author who wrote Sleepy Hollow. So uh, to tell you a little bit more about this piece, uh, these three portraits that I'm mentioning, uh, one of Washington Irving, one of John Jacob Astor, and one of James Fenimore Cooper, uh, were all Lily accessions and they all were framed together uh, before we unframed them to protect them uh, and be able to better preserve them. Each of these was framed together and the reason for that uh, is because there is local lore that states that all three of these gentlemen visited the Connor home at one point. Uh, our historians over the years have uh, not been able to find any actual evidence to really be able to say, yes, that definitely happened. Uh, we don't have anything to purely uh, to be able to completely substantiate that. Uh, that being said, though, um, Eli Lilly was under the impression that these three gentlemen had been there and uh, as a result, collected these three portraits. Uh, so this is a Lily accession. It's one of the very first um, set of artifacts that we have here on site. And this is something I wanna share with you today. Now, one thing to say about the Washington Irving piece here, uh, there's some fine print down at the bottom of it that says, London published for the proprietors of the European magazine by Sherwood Jones and company uh, Porter Nostra Row, April 1st, 1825. Uh, we are doing our best to keep these items in good shape so that they can be viewed and shared uh, over the years to come. Every museum I've ever worked in has its ghost stories and there are plenty uh, that I've heard here at Connor Prairie um, over the years that I've been here. We've had our, our fair share of spooky experiences and when you're in a space like this, by yourself, which we usually are. It's a little bit creepy anyway. Um, the first one was actually outside of this space. I was in my office and it was about seven o'clock at night. I was working late. I was the only one here. And I heard knocking on the doors of the vault from the inside. And uh, that was my cue to leave for the night. I, I did not want to, uh, to find out what was going on there. I did a quick peek to make sure there was nothing in here. And then I got out. Hi everybody, I've got another object from the vault for you today. This is the John Connor locket. It dates back to 1813 and it's made from gold and glass. It's got a tiny little portrait on the inside. So we'll talk more about the portrait in just a minute, but I want to read to you the inscription. It says John Connor of Connorsville, 1813. So John Connor was the brother of the infamous William Connor, who is our namesake. So obviously the Connor family is a big part of the reason why we have so many great pieces here in the collection. And this is one of our favorites. This locket was handed down to William and Elizabeth Connor's daughter, Julia Connor Thompson. It was later donated to us in 1970 by Marguerite Dice, who is a descendant of the Connor family. William Connor obviously is the namesake for Connor Prairie. John Connor is the namesake for Connorsville, Indiana. So if you're ever there, make sure you go check out uh, his statue. <laughs> Inside the locket, you'll see that there is a tiny little portrait. This is actually what's known as a portrait miniature. They started calling them portrait miniatures in the 1700s, but the technique first appeared around the 1500s. They originally were done on translucent calfskin, but later artists realized that uh, doing the watercolor on ivory actually was better for seeing the, the colors and the brightness. They were popular in America in the early 19th century, which explains why 1813 is the perfect date for this locket. They were popular until the invention of the daguerreotype in 1839. So this is an, an example of a daguerreotype. You can see that it's actually a photographic image implanted on the metal versus a painting. Uh, I was in here with Rebecca one day. Uh, we were 
we were prepping a couple objects for an exhibit that we were going to do and we were standing down in the area um, where we, we prep artifacts and we both heard whistling and there was no one else in here with us. Uh, we were not open to the public at the time, so it couldn't have been sound traveling from somewhere else. We, we both were trying to puzzle all of that out and uh, unexplained whistling in this space. So uh, that's another creepy little thing that's happened uh, that I thought I'd share with you for October and spooky season Halloween. Uh, so kind of some fun, creepy stories from inside the vault. We wanted to show you this locket because a lot of people think that the Connor house on Connor Prairie Grounds is actually haunted. One of our interpreters, Kim McCann, had a spooky experience at the Golden Eagle. She's going to tell you about it. So I was working our Follow the North Star program here at the Golden Eagle and um, I was working the role of the prophet, which is the last stop that people make. So it takes them about 90 minutes to get through the program and it was still daylight out. So I was out here on the porch just kind of checking things out. Everything was very quiet. I was listening for um, something that everyone who works at Connor Prairie knows very well. It's the sound of footsteps on the gravel road. Um, and you can hear it pretty distinctly, even from a distance. So everything was quiet. I was listening for that. And um, after a minute or so, I heard that crunch, 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 but singular. Um, so I figured it was one of our path people and path people stay um, hidden in the woods during the Follow the North Star program. They just sort of make sure that no one wanders off where they're not supposed to go and that they stay on track for the program for the timing purposes. So I'm just standing there anticipating one of those path folks to come out and give me some information and suddenly across the back of my neck I just felt a hand, the fingers run across the back of my neck. So I spun around expecting it to be a particular interpreter and I was going to yell at him for trying to scare me and doing a good job of it. And when I turned around, there was no one there. Thanks everybody for tuning in to this spooky edition of Collections Story Through Objects. Come back again next month to see what we're going to show you.